Okay, we're looking at chapter 8, section 4, multiple representations of functions. And this begins on page 603. It should look like this with the dinosaur head coming in. And the first example says real world link. A group of friends are going to the museum. Each friend must pay an admission price of $9. So here we have our um, table that says the total cost of admission, the number of friends is X, and the total cost is Y. And we know that it's $9 per person. Number one wants you to complete the table and then graph the ordered pairs. So what I'd say to do right now is add a little column here that says X column, comma Y and we can fill in these ordered pairs here. Then it says to describe the graph and then write an equation to find the cost of n tickets and then list the ordered pair for the cost of five friends going to the muse museum and describe the location. All right, go ahead and fill those in and when you come back I'll have the answers for you. All right, and here are my answers for the real world link. When it was just one person, it was $9. When it's two people, it's $18. When it's three, it's $27. And when four people come, it's $36. So when I complete the table, I see that as more friends come, it costs more money. And it's $9 every person. So as you increase by one friend, you increase by $9. So number three says write an equation to find the cost of N tickets. And that would be nine times N equals y, or y equals 9 times n. Number four says list the ordered pair for the cost of five friends to go to the museum. It would be 5 comma 45 because it would cost $45. The location would be over 5 up 45. Represent functions using words and equations. A runner's distance in a marathon is equal to 8 miles per hour times the number of hours. So the distance is equal to 8 miles per hour times the number of hours. So D equals, because we have D for distance, equals 8 miles times the number of hours, which they're going to use as T. I would probably use H. Okay? Words and equations can be used to describe functions. For example, when a rate is expressed in words, it can be written as an equation with variables. When you write an equation, determine what variables to use to represent different quantities. Number one says the drama club is holding a bake sale. They are charging $5 for each pie they sell. Oops, let me open this up a little bit more. Um, they're charging $5 for each pie they sell. Write an equation to find the total amount earned for, sell, for earned T. Total amount earned is T for selling P pies. And it's $5 for each pie sold. So the words are the total earned equals 5 times the number of pies sold. And they said that the total is T and pie sold is P. And so we just set up 5 times P. Um, let T represent the total earned and P represent the number of pies sold. And so we have T equals 5 times P. So T equals 5P. Number two, in a science report, Mia finds that the average adult breathes 14 times each minute when not active. Write an equation to find the total breaths B a non-active person takes in M minutes. So B represents the total, it says let B represent the total breaths and M represent the number of minutes. The total number of breaths equals 14 times the number of minutes. So we end up with B equals 14 M. So if they ran, or um, if they were sitting non-active for five minutes and we want to know how many breaths they took during those five minutes, we would take five times 14 and find out how many breaths they took while they were non-active for five minutes. All right, now you're doing A and B. And when you get back, we'll go over the answers. Please pause the video now. All right, here are the answers. It says a mouse can travel eight, mile, eight miles per hour. Write an equation to find the total distance D. A mouse can travel in H hours. That's going to be eight times H 
equals D. So the distance equals 8 times however many hours. For B, Samantha can make 36 cookies each hour. Write an equation to find the total number of cookies C that she can make in each hour. So they're giving you the variables. Do you see that they're giving you these variables? So you use the variables that they give you, even if you don't, just don't agree with them. So C equals 36 times H. Variables. You can, make, you can use any letter as a variable in an equation. If you graph the equation, make sure to label the axes with the correct variable. So if you want to use um, C for your Y, for your output, then make sure on your um, graph that you use the letter C for your output, for your Y variables. All right, represent functions using tables and graphs. And we have a table where it shows time, H, with a T. So time and hours, they're going to use a T for that. And then distance and miles, they're going to use a D. And so they're showing the graph is 0 and 0. After one hour, they've gone 8 miles. After two hours, they've gone 16 miles. And you see that they've graphed those, two, those three points. And they, you see that this is um, a linear equation because we're going to go in a straight line. Remember, we always want to do three points to be able to figure that out. Example number three says the student council is holding a car wash to raise money. They are charging $7 for each car they wash. Number three says write an equation and make a function table to show the relationship between the number of cars washed, C, and the total amount earned, T. So here's the cars washed, here's the amount earned, and we've already figured out that they're charging $7 for each car wash. So using the assigned variables, the total earned, T, equals 7 times the number of cars washed, C. So the equation is T equals 7C. The total earned output is equal to 7 times the number of cars washed, which is the input. Write 7C in the middle column, so this is where our function is going to go, that function rule that we talked about before, 7 times C, and then cars washed, when we wash one car we make $7, we wash two cars we make 14 3 cars 21 4 cars $28, because every time we're taking C times 7, C times 7, C times 7, C times 7. All right, what are the independent and dependent variables in example three? So I want you to think about what are the independent and the dependent variables for ex example number three. So I'd like you to list those two, um, the one independent and the one dependent variable. So the I is going to be this, and the D for dependent variable is going to be here. So go ahead and pause the video and figure that out. All right, so we've got cars washed and the amount of money earned. The thing is, is that we can wash as many cars as we want, and the money earned doesn't depend, or we don't depend on the money earned for the cars washed. But to be able to figure out how much money you earned, you have to wash a car first. So the amount of money that we earn, okay, money earned is the dependent variable because you have to wash a car to earn that money, but you don't have to earn money to wash a car. So washing the car is the independent variable. So washing the car or how many cars that we've washed is the independent variable. Number four says graph the ordered pairs, analyze the graph. Finding the ordered pairs C comma T, the ordered pairs are 1 comma 7, 2 comma 14, 3 comma 21, and 4 comma 28. Now graph the ordered pairs. The graph is linear because the amount earned increases by $7 for each car washed. So we have our straight line here, our linear equation, our linear um, graph, because we have a straight line. Because every time we move one over to the right, we're going up 7. Move over 1, up 7. Over 1, up 7. Every time we, earn, every time we wash a car, we earn $7. So number uh, so for C and D, you're going to do these on your own. Uh, while in a normal flight, a bald eagle flies on an average speed of 30 miles per hour. So please uh, complete C and D, the table and the graph, and we'll come right back. Pause the video now. All right, so for C, it says write the equation and then make the function table. Um, to show the relationship between the total distance, D, that the bald eagle can travel in H hours. And what I find is that if it's 30 miles per hour, that we're going to have distance equals 30 times each hour. 
So um, it gave us, you know, the ability to pick whatever time we wanted, however many hours we wanted to choose. And so remember that our default, so that we all get the same answer, is 0, 1, 2. And so if, if they've flown for 0 hours, he's gone 0 distance. 1 hour, he's gone 30 miles. In 2 hours, he's gone 60 miles. And so I graph these three points on my graph and connect the dots. I know not a very nice looking line, but it is a straight line, so it is a linear equation. When it says to analyze the graph, I would say that every hour the bald eagle flies 30 miles. Every hour the bald eagle flies 30 miles. All right, and that ends section uh, four for chapter eight, multiple representations of functions. If you have any questions, make sure you come prepared for class to ask them. I'll see you in school.